Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutchy Gaming and the first instalment of the big league start guide for Ellie Bowes. Now for those that missed the intro video, um, I'll link it in the description, but essentially the series is going to be a super detailed guide on how to league start elemental bows and transition into end game as smoothly and as cheaply and as quickly as possible. Then the video description and you're going to find all the tools that you need um, to get through the campaign nice and smoothly. There's going to be a link to my profile where you can follow uh, some loot filters. There is one for bow leveling and there is one for early bow mapping. These are going to have all of the items that you might want to pick up on the floor as you go through the campaign. Uh, it's got a leveling path of building, which has got individual trees for each act. It's got some notes about when to add certain gem links, but I haven't added big clusters of skills in for each level because I find this gets really confusing because it starts adding up the mana reservations and it starts um, being confusing where to go for your DPS. So there are no skills in this POB other than the skills you want to aim for at the end of the campaign. So with the path of building, the loot filters, and all the details included in this guide should hopefully have a really, really easy campaign. Now, to help me with this, I'm using a brand new account. Um, for this, I might buy a couple of premium stash tabs just so I can trade. Uh, but the idea is to try and represent um, maybe an average player experience. Like most people are obviously going to have more tabs um, than the, the basic ones. Um, but I want it to be something that majority of the player base um, can achieve. I'm going to be trading as little as possible. And when I do trade, I'm going to make sure that the prices represent a league start scenario where possible. Um, so if, for example, I want to buy a six link and they might cost 5C at the moment, but they cost 60 at league start, then I need to save 60 chaos before I can buy that six link. I'm not going to be buying any gems, going to be leveling them all myself. And the majority of the gear, until we get to end end game, we're going to try and self-craft to make the guide um, basically as flexible as possible so that league after league, this guide should still be working, maybe with just a tweak here and there. So the first instalment is going to cover the campaign up to maps, and it's going to include my overall strategy for getting through the campaign um, at a decent pace. It's going to include an explanation of mechanics and keystones and why we use certain things. It's going to go through all the different bow skills that we can use and why I pick specific skills when I play through. It's going to look at Key points in the leveling when we need to maybe change the skill tree, you might need to respec. It's going to look at what gear to aim for at specific sections and what gem links to look for and what alternative gem links you can use if the perfect colors don't drop. And then the last section is going to cover how to make sure that you're ready for maps. So the purpose of this video, as you'll find later on, is to get through the campaign quickly with a little bit of time at the end to then get ready for maps so that it's a nice smooth transition. Um, so with that out of the way, let's jump into the first section. So the way this guide's going to work in terms of leveling is I recommend when you're leveling, you go all DPS and movement speed in the campaign. to Make sure you're killing bosses quickly, you're moving through zones really quickly, and you're able to dispatch most groups of mobs in one to two arrows. Now this is obviously a 100% softcore approach and isn't the recommended way I would level if you are hardcore, but it's viable in both SSF and trade softcore. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of a combination of keystones, major passives and masteries to push non-crit damage really, really high. Now the guide is going to cover in full when and where to take each node. However, the main parts of the build that make it tick are point blank. This means that the closer you are to an enemy, essentially, or the closer arrow distance travel is, the more damage you're going to do to enemies. When we're leveling, we're literally going to always be on top of enemies and bosses. So this is essentially 30% more damage um, against enemies. And then we're pairing that with precise technique, which is 40% more attack damage if accuracy is higher than your maximum life, but you never deal critical strikes. This is absolutely fine. We're not going to be taking a single crit node in the campaign anyway. So you're essentially just making sure your accuracy is always higher than your life. And there are a couple of ways to do that, which I'll go through once we go through um, the Atlas tree in a bit more detail. But essentially, there's a mastery where you can get accuracy per green socket on your bow. You can take precision. Um, there's some nice accuracy nodes fairly close by. With taking the right nodes, there's no way, unless you manage to get you know, the maximum life roll on all of your gear, that you're ever going to be close to catching up um, with your accuracy, which is really, really handy. It's just something we don't have to worry about. And we're always going to be pumping out this extra damage. Uh, there's also a couple of masteries that we take uh, later on, which is increases and reductions to projectile speed also apply to bows. Projectile speed is a really nice stat, especially if you're eventually looking to go to tornado shot. 
And just having speed applied to damage as well is just an extra bonus. It's really, really nice. Uh, and then once we go to Lightning Arrow a bit later on, we're going to take Lightning Damage with non-critical strikes is lucky. Essentially, this means it rolls your Lightning Damage twice when you attack. And Lightning Damage has a massive range. Um, so if we just take my character here, he's very low, so he's not going to have um, much in terms of... Oh, he hasn't got any Lightning Damage at all. So let's go to the Lightning Arrow on the Ballista. It's 57 to 277. So that means when you hit an enemy, it's basically going to roll a random stat between those two numbers. When it says it's lucky, it rolls it twice. So let's say I hit and I hit 58. That's going to be to the low end of the damage, like nearly rock bottom. So I'm going to do 58 lightning damage. What lucky does is that allows me to roll it twice. So I could hit the 58, but that could also hit a 210. So it's going to roll the second stat, which is obviously a massive increase. And overall, it's a big, big boost to DPS especially when we do go to lightning arrow because the gem has built in lightning damage we're going to be scaling it with elemental damage so it's going to really 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 pack decent punch and that's kind of the way we're building the character to level and it's also going to be the way we're going to stick with the majority of the early mapping section now you may take the odd death in a campaign as you're going to be running on quite low life we don't take a huge amount of life nodes and rangers as a whole it's not that easy to get more than say 120% increased life on the tree. We don't want to be spending ages in the campaign tweaking gear constantly. So you will have to accept at times that you might take your death because your life is a little bit low. The idea of getting through quickly though is then once we're ready to go to maps, we can pick our favorite farming zone, farm really quickly for like half an hour or an hour, get our gear so we're really, really ready to hit the ground running when we go to maps. So the only other thing I would say before we jump into the actual leveling is with any build, axe, one two and three do feel like a chore especially if you're unlucky and you don't get any currency drops and you're having to run with maybe a poorly crafted vendor bow um you know no resistances on anything no currency dropping it can feel a bit of a chore but as soon as you get precise technique and point blank which will be around act three it then feels so much more comfy because you can dispatch bosses fairly quickly um arch nemesis mods which you will start to see in twos when you get to act three become less of a problem it just feels much more comfy. So don't worry if you get to act two and you're feeling that have I made a mistake, this feels a little bit awful. It isn't the easiest build to level, but once you get a couple of keystones um, in place and once you get a couple of passives, then it starts getting easier and easier and there's not really any turning back from there. It just gets more smooth the further you get into the campaign. Um, so what I'll do before we get cracking um, with the axe is I just want to go through what skills to use what options you've got and why you would use specific skills. Now, for me personally, I like to use Reign of Arrows until around Act 7 or 8 once you get Chain in your Ascendancy because Lightning Arrow can feel really, really awkward to use because you basically got one arrow. It's actually quite hard to target a lot of the time if you've got a tiny bit of lag um, or you've got any sort of latency or you misclick slightly, your arrow is just not going to hit anything and you're not going to do any damage, which means you're not proccing your Mirage Archer. It becomes much easier once you level up and you get more arrows, uh, you get chain and stuff like that. The skill becomes much more viable to use. Uh, but at the beginning, I find it quite an awkward skill to use. Um, so in terms of your skills, you've basically got three main options. You've got rain of arrows, which is just a big barrage of arrows. Works really nicely because you don't have to aim. The single target DPS is going to be slightly lower than probably lightning arrow and galvanic arrow. Um, but it's good enough and it works really well for clear. You have lightning arrow. If you feel you're really specific with your aiming, you can use lightning arrow uh, because it does have an AoE once you hit a target, but I just feel it doesn't feel that great. And then you've got galvanic arrow, which is a cone effect. Uh, so you don't, again, have to be particularly accurate, but you are limited to the range. Um, so galvanic arrow, again, you're kind of limited to here, but it's easier to hit your target. Um, so it really depends what you want to do. So we'll just quickly run through and I'll show you all three. Um, so Rainy of Arrows would be just this big AoE here, does really decent coverage and the single target is good enough. Um, yeah, so we look at Galvanic Arrow, which is more of a cone. Again, it's okay, but it doesn't go that far, so you almost got to be in melee range, which does work because you've got point blank and things like that. Um, but honestly, outside a single target, I think the skill feels pretty janky. Um, and then you've got your Lightning Arrow, where you have to be very specific where you aim, because if you miss, um, by the time you speak, you're not going to do any damage. Um, so we'll just go and find an enemy and I'll show you what I mean. So if you're running through, it can be really annoying. Like he just moved out of the way. So it's fine when you hit your enemy, 
Um, but if you're like me and you're not particularly accurate or you're against enemies that move a lot, lightning arrow can just do no damage if you've only got one arrow. Um, obviously, it would work because you would have Mirage Archer. So once you get a hit on your Mirage Archer, it would activate. But it's just so much easier just to run with Rain of Arrows. Um, you don't really have to aim. It's a bit like Toxic Rain. Well, it is like the Ellie version of Toxic Rain. You just hit and run. Um, so I would recommend as soon as it feels good because the skill doesn't have any built-in damage. Um, so that's the only thing where you need to be wary of. If you've got a very, very bad bow with, say, no flat damage on it at all, then you might be better off using Galvanic Arrow or Lightning Arrow because it has some built-in flat damage. Uh, but literally, as soon as you get any bow whatsoever, whether it's got physical or elemental damage on it, I would run it. Um, so I'm in Act 3, and I've got a bow with basically the lowest roll, fire, and cold that you can get, and a tiny bit of fizz. And this is doing absolutely fine um, with Rain of Arrows. Um, so with that out of the way, I'll just jump into leveling. We're not going to go act by act. This is what you do here. This is what you do there. That's available in loads of places, and I don't feel it helps. I'm just going to talk through key moments in the leveling and what you want to do and where you want to be in terms of damage and gear. And then a POB will cover all your separate trees um, and stuff like that. So let's jump into it. Um, so for Act 1, your skills up to level 12 are going to be Galvanic Arrow, with your best links being Mirage Archer and Added Cold. Then you want a Shrapnel Ballista with Added Cold and Pierce. You want a Dash or Blink Arrow for movement. And then a level 1 Precision, just to make sure we've got enough accuracy when we go ahead and take Precise Technique. Once you hit Mervale's Cavern at level 12, you're then going to switch to Reign of Arrows. So your main links are going to be Reign of Arrows, Mirage Archer, Added Cold. Gonna have a lightning arrow, a ballista support, again with added cold. Again, you dash and you blink for movement skill, and then a level one precision. Now, at some point, you're gonna to want to craft your own bow because it's gonna feel quite bad if you just keep going with the budget bow. Um, I'd recommend probably doing it after Brutus. You can do it before if you get um, the right materials and you're a high enough level. But basically, you're using a bow, a blacksmith's whetstone, and then a magic rustic sash. You're selling this to the vendor and you're going to get a bow back with percentage uh, damage on it. I would wait until level 9 so that you can do it with a long bow. There's no point doing it with the basic bow because it's not going to add hardly anything to it. Um, you could do it with a short bow, but I would recommend waiting until you're level 9. Doing it on a long bow because that gives you a decent boost to damage. And that bow then is probably going to see you through to Act 3 without too many problems. Um, you also need to look out for Ellie Resistance Rings. Um, iron rings, serrated arrow quiver for some extra DPS, uh, a rustic sash, and then some movement speed boots. You don't have to get all of these like in the playthrough I've done. I didn't have movement speed boots. I had very bad rings. Um, yeah, I didn't even have a three link by the end of Act 1. Uh, but these are the ideal things that you would look out for. Um, so once you get into Act 2, there's not too much we need to pick up here. You're going to pick Herald of Ice up after doing your first quest in the Chamber of Sins, you're also going to get Blood Rage and run both if you can. Pick up Ellie Damage with Attacks. This can be used in your 3 link or a future 4 link if the colours turn up. And But really that's it for this act. You're going to kill all three bandits uh, and then you're going to go and progress to Act 3. Uh, in Act 3, you're going to pick up Sniper's Mark for bosses and this is when you need to start looking out for 4 links uh, around level 24-25. And the ideal link for you falling personally for me um, to have a no fuss setup would be Rain of Arrows, Mirage Archer, Added Cold, and then Ellie Damage with Attacks. You'd then have your Lightning Arrow with your Ballista Support, and then Added Cold and Ellie Damage with Attacks. You're going to be running your Sniper's Mark for bosses. You're going to have Blood Rage for Frenzy Charges. You're going to have your Herald of Ice, and then you're going to still have your Level 1 Precision. Now, at this point, you do get access to more auras, so you could run Grace if you wanted to be a bit more tankier, uh, or you could drop Herald of Ice and run Anger for a bit more DPS. And um, there's lots of things you can do, and I'll leave it up to you. Um, for now, I would just stick with Herald of Ice and my level one precision. I might add in a second Herald, um, but for now, I'm not too bothered about defenses. They don't offer a huge amount at this stage of the game, uh, but you can feel free to run a 50% aura um, if you want to. Um, and now on your tree, you should have point blank and precise technique. And now is when you need to pay attention to make sure your accuracy is always higher than your life. Um, so we're into sort of mid to end of act through, just about to kill piety um, and then go and take on Dominus. I thought it was a good time to show the tree because this is when kind of your point blank, your precise technique is kicking in. You're going to start picking up four links. 
And as I said, in terms of bows, you just need something with some damage on it. It can be physical, it can be elemental. You just want something that isn't the base bow. Um, this is a bow right at the moment. It's nothing special. Four link, again, I mentioned that four link is going to be dependent on the colors you get. You're very unlikely to get the perfect colors. Um, so I'm running Rain of Arrows, Mirage, Added Cold and Onslaught. This, I would much prefer to be something like Ellie Damage with Attacks or Inspiration, but I don't have that option um, because it's four green. So I'm going to show you kind of how much damage can stack up for doing bossing. Uh, but if we look at the skill tree, now this is probably going to get tweaked as I do the POBs. I'm not sure this is optimal. Um, but essentially what I've done is rush down here to get precise technique. I've then taken the projectile speed uh, mastery and come down here and taken point blank. Got Mirror Archer. I've got Sniper's Mark ready to go. So this should be, it won't be amazing, but it'll be pretty decent for league start damage. Uh, and then we'll go and kill Piety. So as you can see, the damage is pretty nuts for basically nothing. Um, so we're going to go and kill Piety. Even if she teleports, we should be able to tank the fire one. Um, it's not got much health left. And there we go. That's how easy it is with no gear, um, just with these passives. And a four link and not even an optimal four link, like a three link would work absolutely fine. Um, so that's kind of a demonstration of where you want to be for act three. Uh, we'll jump on and carry on with the guide. So with Act 4, we don't really pick up any extra um, gear or gems that we use. Be on the lookout for, obviously, improvements, but we're going to stick with the links that we've got. We are going to use some of the gems that we get as rules later on, like Greater Multiple Projectiles and Mark on Hit, but at the moment, we're not going to use them or buy them. So really, you're just carrying on Act 4 as normal, go all the way through and kill Malachi, and just be on the lookout, yeah, for upgrades to your bow, um, essences that you might be able to use to upgrade your gear, better four links. And that's really all you're doing in this act is looking to improve your gear. So I thought now would be a good time to talk about Trinity. You're getting into Act 4. Ignore the act in the top right hand. I'm just doing this after the fact. Um, Trinity is a gem you want to get into the build as soon as possible. Um, but essentially, once you start dropping more gear and you get more auras and you get more elemental damage into your build, keep checking your skill bar here because it will tell you where each one rolls. Um, so if we check my rain of arrows, I have 55 to 1100 lightning damage. Then I've got 200 to 400 cold and 400 to 600 fire damage. What this means is because my lightning damage rolls at such a range, I'm always going to prop Trinity because as soon as lightning rolls under 400, fire is automatically then going to roll higher because it cannot roll lower than 400. Trinity is a massive, massive boost to DPS. It gives you not only more elemental damage, it gives you elemental penetration, which is very difficult to get, um, especially early on in the game. So Trinity is going to be our number one damage dealer. So as soon as you have a bow or a damage setup that allows you to run Trinity, you should be running it because it is a big increase to DPS. So this is something to look out for. Every time you get an upgrade, check it. Is your Trinity still going to proc? Yes. Or if you're not running Trinity, is the gear that I've got at the moment going to allow me to run Trinity? As soon as you get the right colors, which is realistically going to be green, green, red, blue, then you're going to run Trinity. And even if that gear piece gets outdated, I would still keep it. I made the mistake of not keeping my trash item with the right colors, thinking I could roll with 12 chromes. I really just wanted one blue, two green, one red. Didn't hit it, used all my chromes, so now I'm stuck um, without Trinity. So don't make the same mistake as me. Um, so the only thing I would recommend doing once you've cleared Twilight Strand is you'll be given a small stack of rogue markers. Go to the rogue harbor. You take this contract here and I would just run it. Don't complete it. Loot all the chests. There'll be a few jewelry rooms as well. Loot those. Don't loot the final chest at the end. Come back and then you'll be able to get the contract again and you can just keep repeating it if you're short on gear. But if you do get to this stage and you're really struggling with resistances or you've maybe got gear you haven't upgraded, since act one or two this little contract here that she gives out on repeat is really really good you'll have probably enough road markers to do it three or four times and then as you pick more up you can always go back to the road harbor and do it again um you know i wouldn't use this as a form of of gearing up once you pass like level 50 55 um but when you first get to act six it's really really good so another thing to point out is it's really important that you complete your intro expedition quest so you'll get um, Gwenin, Rog, Tujin and Danik turn up if you do them all. 
because they can be a really good source of currency, gear, or just general stuff to get you going early on. Um, like in the Tuzan example here, I just completed one of his encounters that I came across, which is the first one. Uh, it got me a window of trade. It got me some chaos. You'll often get things like alchemy or so cheap. You'll get orbs of bindings. You might get like 10 fusings. You get stuff that you're going to be able to use in Act 6 or 7 um, to get your gear progressed even further. So once you get through to Act 7, you're going to have a little respect to do on your tree. Um, so at the moment, I have just hit level 51. And this is about the perfect time to do it. Um, so what I've done, I've actually left the mini bosses in Act 6 because I want to go back and have three points available to do this respec. Um, so if we have a quick look at the tree, um, this is kind of what it will look like at level 51. And as you can see, it looks a bit messy um, around here. Um, so what we're going to do is join up here, get rid of this node, go down here and get rid of all this stuff here. Um, so I'll go and kill the two bosses, get the three skill points we need, and then I'll quickly just show you how to do the respec. This is pretty much the only one you're going to need to do other than a few points here and there later on. This is really the only respec um, you're going to need to do. Um, so I'll go and kill the bosses and I'll be back with you in a moment. Okay, so we've gone and killed those bosses, so we'll just go and collect our skill points. Um, and then there's another thing to show here um, in this act in regards to Flask. And then you're pretty much good to go through to act sort of 10. Um, so let's go and collect these rewards. Okay, so you're going to need three empty skill points. So the first thing we're going to do is connect here. We can then refund this point here. Then we're going to use our three points to go down here. Then going to refund here because we don't need these. I'm going to take our life points here and then we're going to refund this node here. And that's kind of what you want your respec um, to look like. And then we've got one spare point, um, which we're going to put in decks here because we're going to start going up and getting uh, the reservation wheel next. Um, but at level 51, this is kind of what your tree should look like. The other thing just to point out at the beginning of Act 7 is you'll get a quest um, to recover a locket for Waylon, which will give you a flask. So you get one flask in Act 5. I recommend taking a J flask. Wayland's going to offer you another one, and I would take your granite flask. So this will cover a good chunk of defenses if you decide you don't want to run um, defensive auras. Feel free to roll these with alterations if you like, um, but at the moment you might be a bit tight for them. Um, so all we'll do, I do not need a mana flask because I've got my leech now. I'm going to keep two quicksilver flasks just so I can keep running nice and quick. Um, so now I've got a decent 1500 armor and 1500 evasion. Uh, just to make me a little bit more tanky as I'm going through the campaign zones. Um, so from here, we'll just carry on. Then the last thing to cover off in Act 7 is you are going to get access to your next lab trials. You're going to go down to the crypt, you're going to get one, and then you're going to go up to the Chamber um, of Sins, and you're going to get your third trial so that you can then run your second lab. But there's no rush to do it. You're going to stick with Rain of Arrows until we have plus two projectiles, which you're not going to do until the very end of the campaign. Chain and colliding with terrain chain do absolutely nothing for Rain of Arrows. So we don't need to do this at the moment. We may as well wait until we're super overpowered and do it when we're like level 68. Um, so the last thing to look at before we move on is bows and when to upgrade. Um, so if we look at my character in Act 7 at the moment, I've still got a pretty bad bow that I found early on. It's item level 42. Um, so I found this towards the end of Act 4. It's got tier 7 lightning, I think this is. Yep. Yeah. Fizz doesn't really matter. And then I've got crafted fire damage. So my damage is still okay, but I think in the next act or two, I'm going to notice the damage start to fall off. So I want to think about crafting my own bow. Obviously, you want to pick rare bows up off the ground and ID them. There's no reason not to. And remember, as we're not going crit, we don't need to worry about the base crit chance of the item. Um, but when should you start actually using currency on a bow to get an upgrade? And I would recommend doing it at item level 51. So if you pick a bow up, and it's item level 15 or above, even if it's just a base, that is something I would use essences or alchemy orbs on uh, because the increase in damage is quite a lot um, from tier 5 to 4. So if we take lightning, tier 5 rolls up to 240, tier 4 rolls up to 327. So it's really, really big increase, um, especially from what we're using, which is tier 7. It's pretty much triple the damage if we can roll that max roll. Um, so it should mean... In no time at all, just roll in either essences or alchemy orbs or, or binding orbs, whatever you find on a bow, you should be able to get an upgrade if you're running like a pretty junk bow like I am um, in this playthrough. 
if you can find one that's got a decent um ellie roll on it so if you can manage to get one of these lightning ones even with any other damage that's going to do you through the campaign um, and through early maps another thing you can do when you get to the later acts and you're sort of level 50 plus is you can go to the rogue harbor every level and buy contracts now you'll either buy them for chance orbs or alchemy orbs and what you're looking to do is buy lock picking contracts and you're looking to buy demolition contracts the lock picking contracts provide a decent amount of chance orbs and alchemy orbs and then the demolition contracts which is really where the money is have chests that drop quite a lot of chaos orbs out of them you're essentially looking for the rooms that have question mark chests in them they drop chaos orbs all of the time even if you only bought say 10 of these contracts on your way to Kitaba, completing them is very likely to give you 20 to 30 chaos orbs which you can then use for some really nice upgrades um, before you start mapping so you can maybe get you know a nice five link maybe even a corrupted six link um, get your bow upgraded and just generally get your gear in a really good position to be able to start um, mapping. So at the beginning of about nine, we're going to do a slight tweak to our skills and one of the masteries because you'll have taken all of this charisma wheel here. You'll also have taken the grace reservation here. So what we're going to do is swap this mastery so that it is dexterity accuracy bonus um, per dexterity. What this allows us to do is then just run a level one precision. We should have enough accuracy to get around 3000 life. It just means we've got plenty of mana to now run Grace, Anger, and a level one precision. If you kept this with the 100% reservation and you had um, like the max level precision that you could have at this stage, you'd only have about 60 mana left, um, which is going to leave you really short um, for a lot of situations. So we're now just into Act 9 and cleared our first Blood Aqueducts. And this is when you really want to start looking um, at your gear to make sure you've got all your links and stuff in place. And if you had to go to maps right now, that you're going to be able to cope. Um, so Act 9 is a place to do it. There's not really any good places in Act 10 to grind um, for gear. In Act 9, you've got Blood Aqueducts, you've got Foothills. Um, you could go and do some Heist. Um, so from level 60 onwards, start going and buying lockpicking and Demolition Contracts. And you can just get enough loot and currency and gear to be able to transition really smoothly into maps. Um, so if we look where I am now, my gear is basically all from very early on. It's pretty trash. So what I'm going to do at this stage is I'll evaluate every bit of my gear and say, is that good enough for maps? Yes or no. If it is, fine. If it isn't, then we need to go and farm um, some more gear. And I also need to get all my links in play. So we're now through to Act 10, and this is going to be the last part of the video. And it's really looking at how to get yourself geared ready for maps. Once you hit Act 10, you want to go and kill Valenta. That's your first waypoint is go to the control blocks. Get the waypoint, kill Valenta. Then you're going to go up and get your lab trial, and then you're going to stop. You're not going to go further. You're not going to go to the Chamber of Innocence. Um, we're not going to go and kill Kitaba. Once we've got our labs unlocked and we've got our last optional skill point unlocked, that's when we're going to stop and look at our gear and basically grind and get ready for Matt. So what I will do is I'll look at my character and see where I need to improve. Now, I'm happy with stuff that's mediocre. I just want to get rid of stuff that's absolute junk. So when I looked over my character, the two things I really needed to get rid of were this amulet is absolute garbage. As you can see, it's item level 26. I've had it since about act three or four. Ammo rings are not particularly great either. This does give attributes and fire resistance. Um, this one gives some accuracy. So they're not terrible, but they're not items that are particularly good. My bow at this point is now borderline being good. I think that you could, I could probably get much better. And the quiver again is something that Helped me out early on, but now I want to replace. So I've gone to the vendors in Act 9 and 10 and purchased basically items that I can craft on. I've sold any junk uniques that I've collected so that I can get some alchemy orbs. I don't have any essences, so this is basically got what I've got to work with. So I'm going to have one alchemy on a bow. As it turned out, hit a decent bow. It's going to be better than what I've got. The only issue is going to be Trinity. Oh, I kind of could be yet to level 64, but that is a bow that's going to be definitely more dps i've rolled t3 fire tier 4 cold it's got an open prefix so i can go and actually craft lightning on this now um, and then that's going to be a decent damage upgrade what i'm trying to do is get ready for the third lab because it's not that easy on trash gear what you can do is actually alteration and regal if you've got a regal orb because you can easily hit damage mods on bows i don't have um, any regal so i don't have that option okay so then we're left with two alchemies left a ring, an amulet, and a quiver. The rings I said I was okay with. They weren't great, but they were they were serviceable. So I'm going to take my luck, and I'm going to roll an alchemy orb on both of these. 
Um, so we've hit a pretty decent amulet, to be fair. I've hit T1 and some cold resistance. Unfortunately, cold resistance was what I was over on anyway. It doesn't throw my attributes out. So if we then go on here and have a look, um, I need to put definitely some fire resistance on it. So we'll do that now. Okay, so that's one item upgraded. And the quiver ended up... Um, it's okay. Uh, it's got life, but it doesn't have any resistances. It has got some projectile speed. Um, some leech with its physical leech. So in terms of damage, it's probably better. Um, but it leaves my resistances in an absolutely awful place with 51 lightning resistance. Um, so for now, I think we're going to have to stick this quiver on. Uh, and then we're going to have to do some grinding to balance out the resistances. But that's the whole purpose of this. So this is the last bit of the video with Valenta down and all the labs unlocked. I'm now at the point where I can go and kill Katava. But what I want to do is make sure I'm ready for maps. So the things you need to check are resistances. Do you have 105% on all resistances ready for the drop? If you don't, then realistically you want to farm um, better gear. So mine is really lopsided, so I need to balance that out um, by getting some gear. Have I got all my links together? No, I don't in this case. I still haven't got mine. Um, so I need to look against the funnel POB, get all my links together so I'm ready to go. And then thirdly, is my accuracy still okay for Resolute Technique? So at the moment, I'm 3,800. So yes, 100%, that's fine. Is my life okay? 3,000 is actually more than enough um, for the beginning of the campaign. Um, so all I really need to do for this character, the gear is, is passable, is I need to go and get my resistances balanced. Then I can do my second and my third lab, kill Gitava, and then I'm ready to map. And it's when I go into the mapping transition, I'll then look to move to Lightning Arrow as soon as possible, but that's gonna be covered in the second video. I've had to make one tweak on my character because my bow doesn't have any lightning damage on it and it's got high fire on it. I've had to drop anger because Trinity wasn't proccing. So as auras, I'm actually running determination, grace, and a low-level precision. I would recommend going anger and grace because you're gonna want the DPS. It's more important than taking um, the old death. Um, and I do think it's going to mean that my labs are going to be fairly slow. So all I'm going to do before I do lab is I like to just run the contracts that I've bought. I went there for two level ups and just brought some demolition and lock picking contracts. I've got enough rogue markers that I should be able to go in and out without even needing to loot the end chest. So if I die, it doesn't matter. I can just go back in. Uh, so I've just run one demolition contract and this is kind of what I came out with. A couple of chaos orbs, binding orb. Um, chromes so as you can see you get a decent selection of stuff and this is just a couple of minutes because i'm not even looting the end chest and um, so all i would do is run all of these contracts use that currency um essences whatever drops to get my gear ready for maps go and complete your next two labs kill katava and then you're going to be transitioning super smooth into maps So I've just completed uh, the third lab at level 65. I'm going to put a POB for where my character was when I tackled this because I actually think it was quite difficult. Um, I was four levels under, but I'm basically ready to take on Katava now and then map. So I thought I'd do the second and third lab. Because I'm going to recommend staying with Reign of Arrows for at least the first few levels in maps, you don't have to tackle the third lab at this stage. If you feel that you're at any risk of dying, then don't do it because it's going to waste time. Uh, do your first few tiers of maps, um, get geared up, get a five link, which will easily have the chaos also to buy a five link, and then come back and trounce the third lab. And um, then, honestly, this took, yeah, 11 minutes for me to do that lab um, because I had to go slow because Izaro took quite a lot of killing. I then looked for dark shrines because I wanted to make sure I was safe. So I would honestly just not bother doing it before you kill Kitava. And um, so I personally would wait until you're geared up a bit more in maps then go and do your third lab, and then you're going to look to transition to Lightning Arrow, but the whole transition period is going to be covered in the next video. Um, so with the third lab completed, it's basically time to do a final check to make sure that we're okay. Um, so my resistances uh, are basically going to be 2% off on Lightning. I'm not bothered about that. I'm perfectly happy to take that hit uh, until we rebalance our gear. I can proc Trinity. 
I've got a decent amount of life at 3,000. I've got all of my skills on board other than my guard skill. The only reason being is I've only got 2k armor. So yes, I could add a molt and shell him, but it does literally nothing. Uh, so I don't have my guard skill up and running, but I've got everything else up and running. I don't care about the guard skill. I have a scuffed four link in here, but it's just for my ballista. Again, I can fix that in maps. I feel like I'm ready to go to maps. Um, so that covers off this video. There is a full written guide that's basically gone through everything that this video has covered. And that's what I would refer to if you need help. The POB has act by act breakdown as well as gem links that you're looking for um, at the end. Um, so I hope this video um, was helpful for people and that this gets you through the campaign um, nice and safely and fairly quickly in a league start environment. Next video is going to be out uh, in a few days, which is going to cover what you do in your sort of white and yellow maps to get geared enough that you can then progress really comfortably. I'm really looking forward to bringing that section of the video out because it's the part of the game I probably enjoy the most. Um, as always, thank you for sticking with me if you've watched this insanely long video. Uh, take care and see you in the next one.